This is English 373, week three, part seven. Um, I, uh, so I'm, I'm, now I'm not even halfway done with this line because there's so much more to be said about it. And this is why it's my favorite line of Shakespeare because there's so much you can kind of point out about it. There are some other meanings bouncing around in there. Um, there are some words that have double meanings that don't quite mean what they mean at first appearance. So let's, let's take a look at it again. Um, here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood and his gashed stabs look like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. Um, gash uh, is an interesting word to use in this context, and I will, uh, I'll talk about why, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about why now. Um, gash, uh, I, there's not a polite way to say this, um, so I'm just going to go ahead. So, you, sometimes I, I, I take a look at students to see if anybody knows where I'm going with this, and sometimes people do. Um, it, is an, it is a slang term that still exists today. You'll occasionally still hear people say, say this. Um, it's a very sort of hateful, misogynistic, anti-woman thing to say. Um, but gash is a very rude slang term for uh, the vagina. Why? Because it is a slit that bleeds. Okay. Um, see, this is you didn't learn that in high school. They don't they don't teach you this shit. Um, like you will occasionally hear terrible people refer to women as like that piece of gash or whatever, um, because they see women as meat to be fucked or whatever. Um, but the word gash means vagina. Now I, you're probably thinking, professor, come on, that's not related to this. Um, but I will remind you, like that. It's, I, someone might say that's that's obviously not what Shakespeare meant. He just means stab wounds. He doesn't mean he doesn't. Not comparing the stab wounds to vaginas. That's crazy. Is it though? Because do you remember? It was like five minutes ago. I mean, I've been talking about it forever, but in the play, it was like five minutes ago that Macbeth compared himself to a rapist because he was sneaking into someone's bedroom to plunge his little penis daggers into the dude over and over and over and over again until he got what he wanted. Now, who's talking? Macbeth again. Macbeth, the guy that compared himself to a rapist, is now the guy comparing the wounds he has made with his dagger in Duncan to a vagina. Um, and it gets worse. Um, his gashed stabs look like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. Now, the first time I went over this line, I, breach means hole, um, and nature means reality. So I said the stab wounds are like a hole in reality. What, count, what comes out of that hole? Ruin and destruction. There's another way to read it, though. Nature um, is often personified as a goddess, mother nature. And so uh, the line has another meaning, which is that the vagina-like holes in Duncan are like Mother Nature's vagina, from which waste, menstrual blood, urine, pours forth. Wow, ah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, it's crazy to think Shakespeare could have... Actually, let's have this conversation now. Um, there's a little, uh, students are often like, did Shakespeare really intend that? Um, that's a, that's a question I get all the time because I'm the guy making these crazy claims about what's really going on in Shakespeare. Um, and so a really common question students have, because most students feel like, first of all, they feel like the author puts meanings into the work and any, and if the author says a meaning is not there, it's not, if you want to find out what's in a book, you just ask the author, whatever the author says, that's what's in the book. And that's that whatever he meant is what it means. And if he didn't mean it, then he didn't. It, it, then if he didn't, wait, whatever he says it means is what it means. And if he says it doesn't mean something, then it doesn't mean that. I had a student once writing a paper about Wally, and the student wanted to write about environmental concerns. She thought, she thought the movie was a metaphor for environmentalism. And then she came to me very sadly. And she said, um, she said, oh, professor, my paper's ruined. I can't write this paper. I said, why not? She said, well, I found an interview with the director of the movie and he was asked if Wally is about environmentalism. And he said that it wasn't. She was like, so I guess I can't write that paper. And I was like, okay, first of all, no, Wally is definitely about environmentalism. I mean, look at the, the people turn the planet into a trash planet. And at the end, they have to fix what they trashed with their human waste. Um, with the, you know, they didn't fucking recycle or shit. They just threw everything out and they were lazy. It's definitely about that. Also, just because the director of the movie said it's not about that, that guy makes movies for Disney and Disney does not like political controversy. Of course he said in an interview, it's not about that. 
I'll give you another one. My other favorite one is uh, the second best superhero ever. The second best superhero movie ever made is uh, is is I think is uh, Spider Verse. Um, and there's a big, uh, the main character uh, does graffiti. One of the graffiti he does is the outline of a person. He graffitis that like all, and it's black inside, and he makes like a white outline around a black human figure, um, and it's drawn on the walls. Um, that looks an awful lot like the kinds of chalk outlines they put around murdered black men, um, particularly black men who have been murdered. And black men are frequently murdered by the police uh, quite a bit when they're unarmed and they're shot in the back or whatever. Um, so it's it's it really was like, oh, I was like, oh, shit, is Spider-Man doing that seems like a Black Lives Matter reference. Like, that's interesting. And then the director was like, no, it's not. But of course the director said that, because if they say it's a Black Lives Matter thing, then all the conservatives won't take their kids to see the movie and they make money on these things. Anyway, the, the question of did Shakespeare intend these things? First of all, we can't talk to the authors. And even when you can talk to the authors, they're not going to tell you the truth. Also, um, I don't really care what they intended. Um, it, it, students often have these, they're like, either the person meant it, in which case it's there, or they didn't mean it, in which case it's not there and I'm not allowed to talk about it. But I think it's more complicated than that. I think that the way they're like, well, was he, did he do that intentionally, right? And they, if he did it intentionally, then it counts. And if it's not intentional, then it's not really there. But think about this for a second. In a professional major league baseball game, right? When a guy catches a ball in midair and then throws it to first base so that he can get the, or whatever, second base, I don't, I don't know fucking sports, but he throws it to the other guy who can catch it or whatever for an out. I don't know fucking sports. Um, the, here's my point. Do you think the baseball player is thinking about that process? Of course he's not. Of course, it happens in one second. He catches the ball and he throws it exactly where it needs to go perfectly. Is he thinking about that? Is that his intention? No. He's not thinking about what he wants to do next. He's just fucking doing it. Is it an accident or a coincidence? No, of course it's not an accident or a coincidence. The guy does this for a living. So if it's not an accident or a coincidence and he's not thinking about it, what is it? Well, it's trained instinct. It's that if you go to baseball practice every day and practice, 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 then when you sit down to play a game, when well, you sit down, but when you go out to play a game, you just do it without thinking about it. People like Shakespeare read a lot of stuff and they write a lot of stuff. And then after a while, they do it without thinking about it. Right? They put meanings in there without necessarily thinking about it. And the same with the baseball player will throw a ball without thinking about it. It's not a random coincidence that I'm making too big a deal about it, but it's also not intentionally put there. It's trained instinct. All right. It's a big student question, and I have now answered it. I'm doing an excellent job. This is all going really well. Okay. Take another sip of this. This is, this is fun. I'm having a good time. All right. Let's go see what's next in the back, because I don't even know what the fuck we're doing next. I don't know. I don't always know where we're going. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Oh, we're here already. Okay, cool. This is fun. All right. So next up is we haven't I haven't talked much about Banquo. Um, by the way, it's worth pointing out a lot of teachers in high school will teach this play like um, Macbeth is a good man and the oh this is a connects to our conversation about what tragedy is how it comes from in here and not out there. Um, a lot of teachers teach this like Macbeth is a good man and the witches corrupt him um, and ruin his life. Um, I don't, I don't think that's right at all. Um, I think the witches don't tell him to do anything he wasn't already kind of thinking about doing. Many people have noticed how quickly Macbeth and Lady Macbeth come up with the idea to kill King Duncan. I think maybe they've had this conversation before. It's just that now is an excellent time to do it. Um, cause he comes straight to the house and the witches have prophesied and they're like, okay, let's do that thing we've been thinking about. Um, Macbeth, um, so, so people often teach this play like Macbeth is a good person corrupted by the witches. I think Macbeth is pretty fucked up when the play starts. I mean, he's already seems to be killing soldiers on the battlefield in creative and dramatic ways that indicate he really loves violence before the witches even get involved. Um, him and his wife seem like ready for murder from the jump. Um, so I don't know how good they are. Some people also like to do a t talk about this play as if Banquo is a really good guy. Um, that Macbeth is the bad guy, but Banquo, his friend, is a nice guy. I don't know how good Banquo is, because Banquo heard what the witches said. 
you got to think Banquo knows who killed the king. I mean, how stupid can he be? I mean, he was up. He saw Macbeth late that night wandering around. Like, they, this is real suspicious circumstances that the king died. It doesn't seem very believable the guards would do it. Um, and don't forget, the witches said that Macbeth would be king, and they said Banquo's kids would be king. So you got to think he's probably pretty happy that Macbeth is king because Macbeth's prop- if two of Macbeth's prophecies came true— Kind of seems like the Banquo prophecy is also going to come true. So Banquo's just like, I'm going to keep my mouth shut, let this go. Now, it doesn't work out real good for him. Um, but he's, I think he's really planning on benefiting from the witches also. Um, all right, I'll pick it up in the next video.